Yeah, this new addiction is honestly terrible. It's definitely one of the worst addictions I've ever seen in my entire life. And people started hearing a lot about this addiction this year, and it's it's whippets. All right, whippets, bro. I don't even know what that shit even means. Whenever my friend told me, oh yeah, Kanye's doing whippets, I'm like, what the hell is a whippet? I don't even know what they were talking about. And then they said it was called laughing gas or nitrous oxide. So of course, they had to give me the lore on all this. I had no idea this even existed. I didn't even know what this was. So, but it's basically like this gas that's used for like medical surgeries it's basically used in medical and dental procedures which allows you to relax before like anything's done so it's basically just used as an anesthetic that's basically what it is and people sell them in these little canisters it's like these whipped cream bottles that's why people call them whippets because they look like whipped cream bottles yeah this is new addiction surfacing i mean i'm sure people did it before 2024 but it's way weirder than zin because this one can cause irreversible brain damage like this literally kills off brain cells like it can definitely be very very dangerous so youtube this video is for educational purposes only i know you're waiting to strike this video down i know there's a karen watching this from youtube corporation and you're waiting to strike this video down you you have your finger on the strike button and you're hu it's hovering over it but it's for educational purposes do not do whip it so where do i begin i guess i guess we'll start with why people even do it now when i heard my friend explained to me what it did to your brain. I was just so confused why people even did this. But apparently this is what it does. It, it gets you high for like a few seconds and it literally just like messes with your whole body's nervous system. It basically slows your brain activity. So you just look like a fent zombie sitting there for 10 seconds and your voice, I don't know what your voice does. That shit does fucking backflips. That shit goes to like 50 million octaves when you speak. It just completely slows your brain activity and it cuts oxygen off from the brain so of course that's just gonna kill brain cells so of course when you take it you feel high happy excited and it feels like you're floating you can sense things and all this other shit you have all these visual hallucinations or whatever because it you know completely messes with your nervous system but this is it for 10 seconds that's the short-term effects of whippets according to webmd.com but yeah, that's what it does to you. That's it. For 10 seconds. But here are the side effects. Tingling sensation, dizziness or tiredness, weakness in the legs, irregular heartbeat, slurred speech, lack of balance, experiencing delusions, nausea, blurry vision, headaches. Like, its purpose is for surgeries and, like, dentist procedures, bro. Like, it should not be inhaled in a goddamn canister. And that's only the short-term side effects. You have a lot more negative than positive here. And the, sh the, the effects, like, the positive effects literally last for 10 seconds. Then it's, it's just immediately side effects after that. I guess or like a few hours after doing it who even knows but still I don't want to test that theory but here are the long-term effects of whippets brain damage liver damage hearing loss kidney failure or damage lack of oxygen breathing trouble lack of vitamin b12 a loss of overall coordination damage to your bone marrow issues with behavioral development heart rate disruption lowered blood pressure lasting ringing or buzzing in your ears no control over your bladder or bowels depression psychosis or any other similar issues yeah this shit's definitely overrated as hell bro 100 percent like what is genuinely the hype to whip it is it because like rappers and other influencers started doing it and some of them have been doing it ever since like 2020 hell go Gunna even has a song called Whippets. Like, and then there's even IG live footage of Gunna doing Whippets. And he's flexing this green Whippet can in his story. I found this TikTok of them. I don't know where this is posted, but it's like some YSL thing. They have like Whippets on their head. I don't know. This was in like 2020. But yeah, I guess all these celebrities have been doing this shit since 2020. I don't know what the hell they're talking about. A YSL ritual. This is not a ritual bro they're literally just standing in a circle high as shit off the whippets but yeah the caption that shit was goofy as hell but yeah they're they're doing whippets in the video basically that, that's what i was showing it for apparently this shit's a whole epidemic all right i only heard about it this year which is crazy like this just doesn't sound worth it and kanye's over here putting his career online putting his life on the line for whippets all for a 15 second high that could possibly kill you all right that's why vultures 2 was probably mid if we're keeping it a whole buck because like that shit kills your brain cells like it's obviously gonna kill your performance too and he said he would do a whole ass commercial about this shit he, and then he was said at a show or something 
that he's taking it in, that he he suggests it, guys. Yeah. My goat is washed. It's like that one scene in Lightning McQueen where the tires are falling off. Like, this is no longer my goat, bro. It's now Ken Carson. Okay, but I'm sure Ye was trolling about the commercial. But still, though, I don't know why he's got over here promoting it like it's the best thing ever. Like, that shit is trash. Like, it's definitely overhyped by these rappers, for sure. And apparently Lil Uzi's doing them. I'm not too sure about that. But that's just what I've heard. But if so, I'm, I think Love is Rage 3 is gonna be trash. Because the way Whippets affects your brain, like, it will definitely affect the way you make music. Which, of course, will bring you less creativity with lower amount of brain cells. But yeah, there's an, another version, we'll say, of Whippets going around. People call it Galaxy Gas. Like, the main purpose for it was, like, culinary, cooking, all that other shit. But there's, like, a whole TikTok trend about Galaxy Gas, and it's... And apparently, it's all over the For You page. I'm not really on TikTok, so I can't really say, but apparently, there's, like, memes about it everywhere. Mainly about this one guy named Lil T. Or Lil T Man, or that's what he said in the clip. That's his name. And in the clip, you can see he's inhaling galaxy gas, which I might have to censor, if, you know, if I wanted to stay on this platform. Which is probably why the whole thing is trending this year, because of this new variant called galaxy gas. Like, I don't know why anyone would inhale something called galaxy gas. But yeah, Lil T-Man went viral on TikTok. It's a whole meme now. I'm, like, it's all over TikTok. Like, I'm sure their sales have gone way up ever since that video. Like, this shit is literally $796 at Walmart. How is this shit $796? How do people think this is worth it? So you're paying $800 for, like, 12 cylinders, which gets you high for 10 seconds, which could possibly kill you. I just genuinely don't get it. I don't know why people think this is worth it, but Lil T has become the next TikTok meme for the next two weeks. But yeah, some people are rumoring that he ended up passing away. If so, rest in peace. But yeah, a lot of people are saying it's true. A lot of people saying it's not true. But it doesn't take away from the fact that Galaxy Gas is super dangerous and you shouldn't do it. And just because your favorite rappers are doing it and Gunna's doing it and he made a whole ass song about it doesn't mean you should do it. I mean, of course, that's a no-brainer to basically everybody. It's very obvious, but you never know. But yeah, I really just sat here and yimmered on about whippets for eight minutes, bro. Like, I really really need to get help to OF. This website has cooked the brains of many simps. There's just way too many down bad men walking this earth now, all because of the OF. And all these simps come in many different shapes and sizes. And now, usually the OF girls have Instagram too, and you will see the simps all over their comment section. They'll either say the most down bad remark like, Please, please, shorty shit on my face! Or they'll say some creepy ass shit like, Oh, hello, beautiful. And they'll say some shit about getting married and say some down bad shit like sit on my face. All while having a wife. Well, most of them. Like, they're damn near ready to start up that child support fund. And they're out here commenting shit like that. Like, I'm scared if the world is even gonna go around if everyone's just out here simping all day. And I just never understood why people had to comment. Because they wanted her attention so bad. Digital footprint, I guess, just doesn't exist in the mind of the simp. Because I've seen some foul shit, especially on Twitter. And all it is is, like, a photo of the girl and they'll say, like, curb stomp me, please. What is that even gonna solve? Like, you're not getting their attention by doing that. It's a loser lose situation if you put some down bad shit in the comments. And I've seen and heard very vulgar paragraphs that I don't even want to repeat on this video. Like, the typical comment section on Instagram, Twitter, is just infested with simps, who are 100% without a doubt paying for the OF, if they're gonna leave some down bad shit like that. And my question is, where are the simps getting all this money from? How do I have this much time to be so down bad? Fly to another girl's house and blow 10 racks just to meet her for a day. It's probably the most awkward interaction ever so just the simp culture around OF you don't even want to get anywhere near that shit because you're just gonna forever be a loser if you're out here commenting and especially blowing racks probably like half your fucking paycheck with the whole arsenal of subscriptions number two money so down badness aside if a simp had 20 OF subscriptions minimum that's 200 a month and then 2400 per year and if you add that up for like three years you could treat yourself to a nice vacation with that money and they'll try to tip them and DM them for a special package, we'll say. Which, who knows how much that costs. They're willing to spend for exclusive photos that are not on the page. And there are some girls on there that make millions 
millions off the down bad dudes combined. So it's really a down bad epidemic in this world. So let's say the girl makes one million dollars and that's it, one million. That's 10,000 simps spending 10 bucks and up that to 10 million, that's 100K. There are so many people in this world who are down horrendous. It's starting to get ridiculous, bro. Like someone in public asked Ice Spice to sit on their face, like no troll, when she was touring in Germany. Just the way these people interact is crazy. Like they get in public and they don't know how to act. Like you think telling a girl, oh shit on me please, is very charismatic? Absolutely not. Oh yeah, man, that's really gonna land in the bucket. Oh yeah, the number's gonna be secured with that. Like, are we serious? Ever since the OF era, it has just breeded so many down bad dudes. They're just walking around everywhere. It's like they're made in a laboratory or some shit. And because there's so many simps out there in this world willing to spend money, that comes with the worst promotion stunts I've ever seen. Number three, promotion. There are some girls out there that will do the most to promote their OF. Even as far as one girl framing this one guy as a complete creep at his work. All over some ridiculous OF promo. Like, is that really worth it to you? To make bread? And her response was like, take the free clout. Like, what kind of free clout are you getting by being painted as a creep? You have a bunch of simps in your comment section. It's just gonna kill the engagement on your videos. So how would we, how would he get clout off this? And someone even recognized him at work. That's how he found out about this and said, yo, are you that one guy? And not only people are doing ridiculous stunts, but they're literally promoting OF to fetuses right here on YouTube Shorts. Well, this is YouTube long form. There's this one girl that's literally from the Mr. B Squid Game, and she's literally using her little brother, who's probably like, what, 13, 14, 15 years old, to promote her OF. Like, do you not know how this affects other people's lives? Like, I bet her brother can't even walk down the hallway without anyone saying like, oh, your sister is OF, oh my god, blah, blah, blah. Because that shit on the internet never goes away. Even some girl getting on a flight and taking up two seats with the fakest ass imaginable. And she made a whole video saying bodies are changing and blah 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 while having the fakest ass on the planet that was probably surgically put on. Like bro, them Johns are gonna be drooping at 40. All this is just for OF. Like it just doesn't seem worth it. Like getting the craziest Call of Duty attachment style installation just doesn't seem worth it. Like I don't know how people can be that desperate for clout and money where they'll act like a dog on the internet. Like, what if your friends see that shit? Your IRLs, your homies? They would just cut you off for the rest of their life. They're never gonna look at you the same ever again. And then there's some people that just straight up leech off of the biggest streamers in the world. And one of them even tried to ruin Kai Sinat's life. All for, all for promotion. Her name is like Kiera Rush or something. Apparently, that whole situation comes up when you search her name. So goodbye, it's over. You are never getting employed again. Number four damaged reputation. If you go out there in the real world to go work a job, apply, go to a CEO and say, hey, I want to work. And let's say it just doesn't work out because it's only like the top 0.1% of OF creators even make that money. So the average person is also going to have their shit on there and may or may not have to get a job depending on what happens. So if you go to the CEO, if this does happen, you say, I want to get a job. You say your name, boom, one Google search and oh, shit, flashbang. CEO's flashbang during the interview. And that's it, no job, goodbye. And that's why they all do this ridiculous ass promo. Even one girl saying that she is turned to Christ and quit. Now I have no idea how true that is, but it wouldn't surprise me if it was done for a stunt because there's no future employment with this route. There have been many people and teachers, there's stories out there of them getting fired for having OF. And even one couple did content like that after school, in school. They did that shit on school grounds. Your reputation if you go on OF, it's forever cooked. You're practically just kissing that shit goodbye. And speaking of reputation, this isn't gonna end well in your dating market either. Number five, dating. OF for some people has probably made dating a complete nightmare. Nobody wants a girl with an OF. No one wants an OF girlfriend. Because you know what they say, it's our girlfriend now. It's the entire internet's girl, not yours. Having an OF is probably one of the biggest red flags out there at the moment. And it probably is one of my biggest red flags out there, to be honest. And just being in a relationship with someone that's doing that type of content just sounds like absolute hell. You're gonna have to watch that shit. You're gonna have to have the cameramen that look depressed as hell walk in every day. And they're gonna make sure they gotta get every 
every little angle and crevice they can of her ass. Like, I don't know, I just feel like I would just be pulling an Adam-22 if I was doing that. Or an I-Dubs, because doesn't his girl have OF or something? And I can only imagine if you're in a relationship with an OF girl and another dude, if fucking Chad and Big T show up to the door, ready to rumble. Like, I don't know how that doesn't make your stomach drop just thinking about it. I don't know how people can do that. But if you're on the other side of the spectrum, if you're the simp watching all this shit, imagine trying to pick up a girl at the bar. It probably wouldn't go too well now, would it? Number six, the pedestal. Whenever you go out to a bar, try to pick up a girl or whatever it is, if you watch this type of content on OF and are paying for this content, you will most definitely put them on a pedestal and treat them like they're some sort of goddess. And it would be an honor to talk to them. So that may or may not translate into the real world, where they may or may not just act down bad around the girls. And I guarantee you, if you ask any girl, they're gonna think that shit's pathetic and they're never gonna wanna get with a guy like that. And let's just say, I don't know, in some scenarios, these simps probably are thinking with the wrong head. If you pick up what I'm putting down. Because they're commenting all this shit, acting like they're about to get laid or something. Because they hear all this shit every day, and they don't want to hear the creepy shit either. Like the curb stomping comment. Something like that, for example. If you're saying this stuff actively, you're just gonna be creepy around the girls. Number seven, loneliness in the goon cave. The OF whole industry thing, they literally just capitalize on... Lonely gooners. That's literally it. That's their audience. People that live in the goddamn goon cave all day. Yes, yeah, some people call their rooms the goon cave. It's sad. And they're out here making more bread than doctors. If they were hypothetically to get a girl to pull up to the crib and you say, Hello, shawty. Welcome to the goon cave. Do you really think they're staying? No, they're dipping. They're li they're done. And now there may or may not be some ridiculous items that live in the goon cave. Because there's some people that have sold the most ridiculous shit via OF. Number eight, selling ridiculous shit. Let's go through a long list, all right? Just Belle Delphine in general. Boom, there you go. You got bath water, urine, farts in a jar, melon sweat, and people buy it. There's losers out there who will buy that. They're that down bad. Like, that shit will probably give you some sort of disease if you just get a nice whiff of the jar, especially consuming the bath water. Some mold's probably gonna grow in that shit on the way there. It's just warm and moist. It's just a great growing place for bacteria, so I don't even know why you'd purchase that. But hey, it's all for the girl, man. They do it for the girl. Hey, uh, Belle, I've purchased your bath water. One, two, fuck. Your air, just like that. She's not gonna fuck you, little bro. Cat you're basically forcing your body to run on this substance. There's multiple different levels to this, and there's many different types of ways to consume caffeine. So here are some of the people you may run into. And by the end of this video, you're going to see peak caffeine addiction. Like, it honestly shocked me. But we'll start and work our way up. We'll, we'll start with the sugar fiend. And that's their source of short-lived energy. Because come on now, when have you had, like, a root beer, candy, a goddamn devil dog, and then after, like, a few hours, you felt energized. No, your ass is slumping over. I don't even want to hear it, bro. The sugar crashes hit. And then you're just out for the count. And now when I was younger, I was this kid. I was the sugar fiend, bro. I would just fiend on sugar for energy. <laughs> Oh my god, oh my god, energy, energy. And after an hour, boom, I was, I was tired as hell. Then we'll move on to the next level. The dude that doesn't realize he's actually drinking caffeine. So I was getting this thing called the cookie mocha crumble at Starbucks. Bro, that shit is so good. But guess what? It has caffeine in it. And I didn't know. Like, how am I this stupid? I don't know. I thought it just had sugar, but no, it had like a shit ton of caffeine. And believe me, after one of those, bro, I was cooking up one of my videos, like, easily. But then after that, oh my god, like, I felt like I was on my deathbed. But have y'all ever had Hershey's chocolate? Apparently that has caffeine in it. There's 34 milligrams of caffeine in one cup of chocolate chips. What the f- I've been lied to my whole life. But that is a lot smaller in comparison to people who drink coffee. Now your morning cup of joe type of people are your average consumers of caffeine. Now I wouldn't say they're addicted per se. I would just say they rely on They wake up and feel like they're on their deathbed until they drink their coffee. And then it's just like a quick snap and boom, they're ready for the day. What the fuck? It's already fucking 5 a.m. Dad, did you pack my lunch? Shut, shut up, man. Need, need coffee. Need, need coffee. 
They can't even stay awake in the morning. And then all of a sudden, once they drink the coffee, it's like they got loads of energy. All right, ready for work. All right, bye guys. I'll see you later. And the addiction begins when you start to lose sleep. Now, obviously, caffeine keeps you energized, so you won't be tired if you drink caffeine too close to nighttime. Now, if you drink enough caffeine, you'll be up the entire night, just like tossing and turning. Once you get to that phase where you, you start having mood swings and everything, all right, this is just going to make it even worse. Because now, one, you're going to be drinking even more caffeine to replace all the hours of sleep you lost and two you're not getting natural sleep now this is where it starts to get concerning and people begin to lose sleep and that's where the addiction begins level four you got that one guy that orders the exotic coffee drinks like twice a day now i don't know how anyone can work at starbucks because i don't know how the hell y'all remember this hey 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 how do you do how's everyone today Woo! can i get a Hmm, what shall we do today? The Ice Vente Caramel Micacato 15 Pumps Vanilla Syrup made with heavy, heavy whipped cream. All right. Uh... What? Then you got energy drinks. Now, energy drinks are a slippery slope. And there are many cases where it can be way too much caffeine. Well, I think it's terrible for you. And it's either I'm gonna be dead in like a few hours or I'm gonna be up for the entire night. And I just don't trust that much milligrams of caffeine going into my body at once. And there's people that have told me to work faster and drink an energy drink. Yeah, that was a shitty minimum wage job if you couldn't tell already. Oh uh, yeah, hey kid, I think you need to drink a Red Bull to work a little bit faster. You're not, you're not cleaning the tables fast enough. Shut your stupid ass. I almost damn near walked out. I'm not lowering my lifespan and risking my health for your stupid ass job. All right, goddamn. I could give two shits about you and your goddamn tables. And I don't even know if it's healthy to be drinking all that. Now you got the people that pull all-nighters with caffeinated drinks. Now this is level five for sure. Now I'm not really an energy drink enjoyer. I don't really drink them that often. But this one particular time, I had one. And this is probably the only time I'll ever have one. I do not advise doing this, by the way. So the story goes, boom, it's 3 a.m. This is like usually maximum for me. I'm like, all right, I'm going to bed. I was procrastinating on the editing. I was just scrolling on my phone like a bot because, well, it's kind of hard to concentrate at three in the morning. But then one of my homies said, yo, you guys remember Clash Royale? And then, yeah, oof. I pushed 300 trophies in Clash Royale. I was, and we were playing, all playing Clash Royale for about an hour and a half. And I didn't even realize how much time went by. Look at my clock and boom, 5 a.m. strikes. And once 5 a.m. hit, I'm like, all right, there's no point in going to sleep now. So what did I do? I made a rap song. And I sounded like I was being held hostage in a trunk. Nick, yo, and I'm not talking big man. And I got the Mac and we get the shooting. You know, Nick, avocado in this bitch, we got the Mac. Just got some Chipotle, now we blowing that bathroom up like a truck. Oh, yo, I'll call me Travis Scott, the way I see my homies cactus and I check. And that's the last thing I did before I tried going to bed. So it was like 6 a.m., tossing and turning, 6.30, same thing. And I got up and edited another minute of my video. What the fuck? And then the rest of the day sucked. It was terrible. I could not sleep and I felt like garbage. So do not do this. It was so hard to stay focused for the entire day. Level five, you begin to get irritated and it dictates your mood for the entire day, whether you have caffeine or not. And at this level, it can get very, very concerning because people won't even feel the benefits of caffeine. They've drank that much. Their tolerance is so high that they can't even feel energized off of like a coffee or something. Like that's when you know it's a serious problem. G fuel. I don't think much needs to be said about that one. It's the gamer fuel for those all night gaming sessions. Well, at least I think it is. Now I'm not going past this level. G fuel has like 300 milligrams of caffeine in their energy drinks, bro. Holy Holy hell. And the powder's like 140 milligrams per scoop. So you already know this is some serious stuff. Caffeine and night, not a good combo, like I said earlier. Because there's that one dude that just downs a whole tub of G Fuel during his gaming session. Dude, how are you locked in right now? It's like three in the morning. Well, technically speaking, I think it's because I consume G Fuel, making my reaction time 0 0.02 seconds better than before. And it's giving me the slight adrenaline boost I need. Yeah, shut the fuck up, I know. All right, just continue carrying us, you sweaty nerd, Jesus. Like, bro, you're gonna be shaking like a motherfucker if you drink so much G Fuel to the point where your adrenaline is just through the roof and your heart's racing like hell 
hella fast. I don't know how you're smoothly able to play the game, but somehow people are. Then you have the- oh, I'm not addicted, bro. I'm not, no, no. But yeah, you are. If you get mad and cope that you're not addicted, most likely you are. Because you would respond to that calmly. And now, not even realizing you're addicted is even worse than knowing you're addicted. But with this person, they're just closed off and they're coping, saying they're not. So they're more likely never gonna change. So yeah, obviously, that's the worst mindset you can have when it comes to addictions. The I'm not addicted kid, he knows deep down, he knows he's addicted. But he just does not want to admit it. This is level 7. When someone exceeds 400 milligrams of caffeine per day, it is safe to say you are very addicted. If you need to have 5 plus coffees a day, etc. and a monster or whatever it is, that's level 7. I've heard some of my teachers say that they need like 5 cups of coffee every day. Like, yeah, that cannot be good. I never got it through my brain how someone could drink that much coffee and not have the jitters in the office. I don't know how people do this and not shake uncontrollably throughout the day. But yeah, if you know someone that took a five hour energy or espresso shot, you know they speed walk like they're in the fucking Olympics. Then once you get past the 400 milligrams of caffeine a day, that's when things start to get rough. Obviously, if you're surpassing the recommended dose of caffeine every day, I, I think it's safe to say you're addicted. The seven levels of gaming addiction start with level zero, the friend's house gamer. Now this kid, pretty self-explanatory, he would go to friend's house and play video games, that's it. You don't own a console at this level and you just play whenever you're offered and it's never at your own house. It's literally impossible to get addicted because you don't even have a console or you don't even play. Now once you try it out at your friend's house or whatever situation situation it may be, you play the game for the first time, and then you decide, you know what, I'm gonna invest in a console. You are now at level one. Noob slash carefree. Now, I fucking lie at this level right here, bro. I used to be, I used to be way up there, like level five, which you'll see later. But now I'd say I'm a level one. I would just play whatever console it was whenever I felt like it, which isn't really often. My first time playing was a completely different experience than it is now. I remember the very first day I was introduced to a console. So I, we got the Wii for my dad's birthday. This was not for my birthday. And of course, I was really confused as to what it was at first. But the fact that you could choose what you do in the game, to my little Timmy mind, that was so amazing. But in reality, yeah, no shit. You can do whatever you want with your time. But apparently, it was like endless opportunities in Mario Kart Wii for me. And once I unlocked Diddy Kong, nope. All right, goodbye. I fell in love with playing video games. Like, me and my Wii, like, the, the Wii was my fucking wifey, and we were about to get married and have a ceremonial-ass wedding. Okay, anyway, I'm getting off topic. But once you play on, like, a sort of schedule, like, you start to play, I don't know, let's say, like, an hour or two hours, you are now on level two. You get on with the homies fairly consistently, and now you spend a bit of time playing. It could range from, like, an hour to two hours, like I said. If the game has a huge skill gap, well, you're not gonna be good at it yet. You're not gonna be an absolute nerd at the fucking game or whatever it is, you know, you're pretty content with where you are in skill level. And you don't really care to improve, which honestly, you know what, it's probably better. Or else you will fall into the trap of level 3. You start to get a little bit competitive at the game. It's nice to be competitive in situations, you know, you're just gonna be a bum and get nowhere in life if you're not. And at this stage, you wanna get to the top, you wanna beat the game, you wanna get to a high rank, you have the goal in mind to catch them all in fucking Pokemon, whatever it is, because there's something about it just gives you dopamine. Just getting these accomplishments in the video game, which honestly was now looking back is kind of weird. You know, I thought I'd get dopamine from accomplishing things like in real life, but I guess to me as a little Timmy, it was all about the game, collecting them Pokemon, try to unlock all the characters in Mario Kart, which is when you start to play like two to three hours a day. Now, I don't know the recommended amount or whatever it is, but I would not recommend passing this level, me personally, because some people at this level begin to rage, especially when you get really attached to a certain game, you'll start to rage at it more. Oh, Fuck! God. Every time I died in Mario Bros. Wii, I would just plunge onto the couch and just start kicking my feet in the air, bro. I don't know. It was really harmless rage. But now we go on to level four which is where the toxicity begins. This is where people, some people, begin to start raging. Now, if the game is a giant skill gap, it's like fucking huge. They're gonna grind, they're gonna be on that John for like a while, and they're still gonna suck. And they're gonna suck because, well, it's a huge learning curve, and they, I'm sure, they're determined to get better at the game, so they're gonna get mad. And they're gonna keep making the same mistakes over and over again. Fuck, I blue to elixir again. Fuck. 
Oh, no, please, please, please. No, no, no. Don't get the towel. No! And of course, yeah, this guy's... Oh, wow. What a loser. This, this kid's doing his little hee-hee-hee-ha. <laughs> thinking he's all that in a fucking bag of chips because he won a game of Clash Royale. Dude, who the hell are you screaming at? Uh... I don't know. But when I started to care so much about a video game, just the rage would just begin to build up more and more. And if you have like a competitive nature like I did with the game, like you want to be the best. So some people are just going to get bad and I, I happen to be one of them. Now there were other games like shooter games. Now these set me off the fucking edge, bro. Oof. Although them John said rated M, yeah, I was not fucking mature enough to play them, Jonathan. So let me tell you, because at level five, you begin to become very competitive at a game. And this may cause some rage, a lot of rage, especially those bad days where you're playing like shit. At this level, if you're not cooking at like every second of the game, it's a big deal. Now, I was heavily addicted to a few games in my time, like Fortnite and Rainbow Six Siege. It was bad, so bad. You know, all I would think about was Rainbow Six Six Siege and getting my rank up, or Fortnite and getting the W's or whatever it was. Those two games I specifically remember because it was my freshman year. And this for me was probably peak video game addiction. And now I was getting close to like streamer hours on the game. It was getting bad, even though I was making no funds, none. I was doing this shit for free, bro. I guess I wanted to be like the best out of my friend group. I don't even know. Like I, oh, I just wanted to be the best. Like no one ever was. At this stage, I wanted to be like the talk of the friend group. I don't know, because we would all be squatting up, or whatever it was, playing duos. Maybe I wanted to get a high rank for bragging rights or something, like, yeah guys, I'm a platinum in rainbow or whatever. Oh, I got a 70 kill win. We would all try to one-up each other on the game, basically. That, that's how it would go. Well, for the ones who were competitive. So if you had a competitive team, if you were like, playing a team game, they will get on your head if you're doing ass, which will just create even more rage and toxicity. Uh, where's the bomb? What did you say? I can't hear you down there. On the bottom of the leaderboard what are you doing down there get some fucking kills buddy you ain't doing shit for this team i'll tell you where the bomb is if you get a kill competitive team games are crazy bro i'm not gonna lie if your team composure gets fucked up like g fucking g bro you're screwed it's just gonna be rage central in that john no one's gonna be have like that right mindset nothing's gonna happen now at level six we have the professional this motherfucker either is a professional making the bread which you know what i fucking respect that w grind set that is pretty cool that you can make video games games and make money in this economy that's pretty fire but if you're that one motherfucker with ttv in your goddamn name knowing damn well you don't stream on twitch who the fuck are you? And every time we kill them, we would check to see if they were actually a streamer. And see if they're like an actual active streamer. And if they were, oh, you bet we would troll them. And now there's this other thing that we would all laugh about. Which is why I never got past level 5. Was because there, there was this thing that Ninja did with like gaming stretches, energy drinks, and all this other shit. And I promised myself... I will never stretch before a fucking video game. And I'm glad I didn't. I'm, and I'm glad I never drink G Fuel to enhance my reaction time by like 0 .02 seconds. Because it's got a fuck ton of caffeine in it. That shit will give me the jitters. And yeah, at level 6, you'll start to drink caffeinated drinks to enhance performance. Gaming stretches. Because one, it's your job. Or two, you're a wannabe that doesn't even grind. Like, how can you even expect to blow up if you're not even streaming or posting videos, whatever. It's like, you gotta be consistent, bro. Just fucking around playing the game isn't gonna do shit for you. Now for content creators, this is where they stop because well, they have a life. And this is where most people should stop if they've even gotten to this point. And now we're at level seven and this isn't where it stops. This is not the max. There is a level infinity, but at level seven, this is where gaming begins to get in the way of life. All right, this is no longer a hobby. This is your fucking life. Now, you were slowly spending more and more time as the levels went on, but now it's your entire life. When you start to miss important things for the game, or your whole day revolves around the game. And if you even do go outside, you will be repping the gaming merch. I pause my game to be here? Huh? He's putting that shit on. Look at Sheldon. He's dripping. Yeah, they will have some fit on like this. And this is where the Discord moderator timing begins. They start to gain a fair amount of weight and the pudge, they start to get some pudge in their life. And then they begin to neglect no. hygiene and all this other no. stuff for the game so they get the maximum amount of time possible. They just throw self-care out of the window at this point. They put the game over themselves at this point. Poor sleep, poor hygiene, poor self-care at this level.